Welcome back to the Girl and Me series. This time it's about Letty, Letitia, I guess Garcia, but it's a very commonplace name. But uh, I won't tell you the name of the school we went to. But suffice to say, it's the school the size of two houses. So if you took two houses, including the backyard and the front yards, and you put them side to side, that was how big our school was. It was a very small school, very unremarkable. We had bungalows, makeshift like cargo boxes make, made into like classrooms. So you had these classroom, these bungalows, and then there'd be like the administration office with the principal's office. And that was it. Little, a couple of bathrooms. That was essentially the, uh, the entirety of that. So I went to this school. I, I, I had problems. I had social issues. I was so, socially inept, a sociopath, an incel, right? I shifted from school to school to school. And eventually I went to this small school for Christian kids, uh, ages K through 9. Uh, we had a plus and minus system over there. Um, Lethe was somebody that I met. I wasn't sure how I felt about her, if I was attracted to her or not. I guess if you want a comparison of what she looked like, you could look at Indy Navarrete from Superman and Lois. Um, kind of sexy, kind of definitely photogenic, beautiful. Uh, she wore capris. Uh, dark navy blue uh, sweatshirts, purple dresses, uh, very sweet, simple, down to earth, next door, na next door girl, girl next door kind of girl. So I talked to her. I tried to get her attention. I don't know what it was. Maybe it's because she was a sweet and simple girl. Um, there was another girl, Lorraine, but her family, her her dad was like a tough biker dude um, who was always uh, working on campus. The mom was there. So maybe I just felt weird about talking to Lorraine in that way. Lethe was somebody that um, didn't have anybody, no family members there on campus. Uh, she was, she is one year older than me, if she's still alive. Um, so at the time I was 13, 14, and Lethe would be 14 or 15 years old. This was 1991 to 1992. Um, I was in the 7th grade going on 8th grade. So it was a different time for me. Um, you know, like, everybody was a Christian of some type. You know, Christian religion, Christian faith. Um, I don't really truly understand it. I still don't. I mean, I don't... I have a disdain for for biased religion of all kinds. But I was there because my parents put me they didn't know what to do with me. Nobody does, right? So I talked to her, did funny impressions, did funny gestures acted like a Chris Farley type of clown to get her attention, like kind of like Jim Carrey or uh, what is it? Soupy Sales or uh, what is it? Uh, Jerry, you know, Jerry Lewis or something, whatever. But I kind of got annoying. You know, I was like 14. I didn't know my head from my ass. You know, I didn't know anything. And the sad thing was, was that I, had I been a bit older, I think I would have impressed her more. But of course, if I'm too old, I'm just, you know, it's just statutory, rapish kind of, you know, territory. Uh, so, you know, at my age, at 14, her being 15, no, 13 or 14 or 14 or 15, it was just, that's the way it was. I think just, so I talked to her a bit. I think everybody in the class knew that I was in love with her or I liked her. So they would write my name, Hart Lethe, just to be assholes. But whatever. I didn't give a shit. I mean, it was just, I was annoying. But I think at some point, like, my teacher, one of my teachers, I think is Shikakawa. <laughs> um, I, he was like my first Japanese teacher. He didn't teach Japanese. He taught like history class and Bible studies and English math. Uh, but he announced to everybody that I was leaving uh, for 1992 to 93. And that's when Lefty looked at me very seriously and said that I was leaving. And yeah, I think she I think she eventually felt the same way about me that I did to her. And maybe I was the first guy that actually liked her. Um, and it was like on the last day of school and my mom drove up to me at the same time Lethe found me. I was like, God damn it. Because I don't, I, I was still, I was, I think I was beginning to be angry at my family at the time. So she, she talked to me, she, she, she yelled for me uh, 
and said, hey, are you leaving so soon or whatever? And she, uh, she hugged me. So we embraced. Um, we hugged. But I felt a little weird about it, not because I didn't, not because she hugged me, but because my mom was right there watching us. That was what was so weird about it. This was 1992 that, you know, um, let these said goodbye to me because um, you stay until the ninth grade and then you move on to high school, I guess. So I went to an all boys school in 1992 in the fall. And Letty and I, we did Bible verses. You know, if you memorize your Bible verses, you win a prize. So there was three people, Sean, a guy, S-E-A-N, Sean, Sean, Letty and me, we won for, Bi- for most memorized Bible verses. I didn't really give a shit. I just memorized whatever. But um, so we, um, we were supposed to meet up. At a, at a shopping mall, I think Puente Hills Mall or West Covina Mall. And then we were going to watch Batman Returns in theaters. Because Batman Returns was the movie to watch in that time. I mean, you know, maybe I was spared. So um, we never did get to meet up because by the time we were supposed to go, I was starting uh, new classes. Now, the reason why I didn't stay for the ninth grade was because I had a I had a falling out. I cried. I was I was having social problems with of the other kids, it was tough. It was difficult. Um, just to uh, the music's kind of getting annoying anyway. It's NES music anyway. But you know, it was tough to really um, to just do two things. I can't be in two places at once. And I, I well, but before I before I talk about that, it's like I had social problems with the other kids. The other kids weren't respectful of me, and I think I had this problem from from. Nursery school, preschool, kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth, seventh. So all the way up to this point, I was still having social issues. And there were good moments and there were a lot of bad moments. Um, But honestly, I I just didn't know what to do. So my family had me go straight to a high school after the eighth grade. So I was there for about a year and a half. So one kid died from a stroke uh, in our class. We only, so this school is so small, uh, this Christian school, you had one kindergarten class, one first grade, one second grade class. It was that small. One, one group of kids for every grade. It wasn't like you had multiple kids like that, multiple kids per grade. So that's why you could have a small, uh, you know, basically the size of a, of a, a McDonald's and a house kind of shaped school. Awkward. I got into trouble a couple of times, but anyway, um, so I think my sister told off my teacher as to why I couldn't go with Sean and Lethe for one last day to the mall. And I was I was looking forward to it, but damn it, you know. And had I gone, I think things might have been different. Because I four years passed. We go to 1996. I'm 18 at this point. It, you know, and I talked to different girls, but I always wondered what happened to Lethe. And so eventually, um, I wanted to get a detective to help me find her. You know, I pay. I would pay for a detective to you know help me find, um, you know, based on what I remembered about her. So it was difficult. I mean, at that time there was no Google, there was no YouTube, there was no social media, there was nothing like that. This was 1996, so you had to remember the person's name and then look it up. But her name was so commonplace. Like, you know, Juan Valdez, there was no fucking way, even if I tried. So I eventually called the school up administration. They told me she got married and she moved out of the state by the time I graduated high school, 1996. So four years passed and she didn't even wait. She got married at 18. Um, I have to think that's probably one of the dumbest things she's ever she ever did, getting married that quickly. Because when you get married at 18, you throw your whole life away. It's it's kind of sad. Um, this art that you're seeing is based on Letty, the real. So this is how she dressed, very, very much, um, very stylish. You know, you know, a little sexy, but a little bit um, conservative, like a good Christian girl should. Um, I like to think if I had met her on that day at the mall with Sean, 
and we watched Batman Returns, things would have been very different. I might have, I might have married her. Or we would have been together in a serious relationship, um, because when she and I, when we embraced that final time, that first and last time, that had been on my mind for, I guess, going on twenty plus years. I still think about that. And I was going through those changes through puberty and stuff. But once I went to an all boys school, that was it. Done. I couldn't see girls except if I went to the swap meet, which I'll I'll get into the swap meet one with Maria uh, uh, this weekend. But for now, um, I hope Lefty's doing well. I hope she made better decisions uh, since 1996. And um, yeah, when you want her, it's one thing. When she wants you, it's a whole other thing. But then the worst part is what could have been.